participants. So, good afternoon. Thanks to everybody, all the participants, and thanks to the organisers. Now, I work for Distramel. So, I will talk about technology as applied to waste management. Now, we are talking about um, optimal sorting. And we have various different technologies that we are now rolling out that will help us to achieve optimal management. Now, Einstein in his day said that not everything that we can count can be quantified, not everything that can be quantified counts. So <clears throat> we therefore should approach this from the angle of various difficulties that we need to be able to face up to when we manage waste. So what are these difficulties? Well, first, do we know where and how many containers there are? Can we calculate the cost of maintenance and management? Do we have uh, a service services plan? And do we ha know where all of our mobile vehicles are at any time? Well, our solutions obviously involve RFID and GPS. Uh, that's radio frequency ID and GPS. And Together, we can use these to embed technology on various different vehicles that we use, and then we can use radio frequency to identify exactly where all the containers are. This therefore allows us to have complete traceability, and this will allow us to improve maintenance and know exactly when collection is taking place. We have our management software, which um, uh, allows us to see easily and quickly exactly where our containers are. Uh, for example, we can also consult how many times these containers have been used over the last year. For example, following difficulties, um, what um, waste needs to be collected most frequently and um, what places of my town uh, is recycling done most frequently. So we're obviously talking about the generational gaps. We're talking about um, relevant figures that we need to study, demographic figures uh, with rela in relation to how people and where people recycle. Finally, am I prepared for this generational payment? I oh, know th this payment per generation, the pay as you throw, basically. Is this a system that we can roll out? So these are the questions. Solutions. Well, we can have a weighing system to start with. So we can weigh the bins or we can uh, add up how much the bins weigh per district. And this gives us a series of different indicators. And we can use these, these indicators to produce statistical reports on the waste that is collected at any given time. So this is the uh, apparatus that we use on board in our vehicles so that we can f trace our bins, our containers. We can uh, trace volume uh, and we can see how full these containers are at any given time. Finally, the following difficulties that we need to face up to. In, if we look at all of our bins, some are highly distant between one and the other. For example, if you look at glass fraction, there is a very irregular pattern with regards to depositing and collection. So mm, we need to look at that. And also a lack of technology in management can make it difficult for us to resolve uh, incidents. So we're using, therefore, mobiles, mobile applications to resolve these kinds of difficulties. So what are solutions? Well, obviously, we can use mobile technology. We can also use ultrasound technology. This is a kind of technology that allows us to um, measure waste levels. We can also measure the percentage that these bins are, how full these bins actually are. So we can use these measuring systems to find out exactly what the situation is on the ground. So we have in Barcelona these volume measurement systems in place already. And in 2014, we mm, made a huge leap forward. We started to implement two-way technology before we had embedded technology on waste collection vehicles that only sent information one way, information on their location, what they were collecting. But now we have two-way technology, which means that we can now send information back to this onboard software. So we can 
have information on the operators, on the service that they are conducting at any given time, and we can use the electronic uh, apparatus to send this information both to the vehicles and back, and this allows us to interact. There is now interaction between all the various de devices of the system, uh, on board the sensors, applications, software, and so on. This also allows us to um, speed up communication systems. For example, I can communicate to all the lorry trucks, uh, lo the, the, the waste lorries, one day that they cannot go down a certain street that's been closed for that day. And we can also remotely control and manage the hardware that has been already embedded into the uh, lorry itself. So this is what we can do. What other different aspects do I think are key to improve our system or to decide on the system we want to use? Well, I'm sure you will understand that you have now problems and you know how you're going to tackle these challenges. But any kind of management solution needs to be scalable. So we need to look at GPS systems on board, we need to look at weighing and identification, mobile applications, we need to look at exactly how we're going to make all of these various different systems scalable so that we can adapt them to the data that we're working with. Now our system needs to be adaptable, we need to be able to adapt it to our needs. We have an IP, we have a communication system, and any system that we decide to implement needs to be able to uh, adapt. We also need to be able to integrate third parties. Uh, so we, if we don't do this, we're going to have a whole variety of different systems that might not necessarily be compatible with each other. So we therefore need to make these systems compatible. We need one single management platform, and this is the platform that we need to be able to adapt to all users and third parties. Our mobile applications and software needs to continue to be to evolve, to update all the time. We heard about people speaking about waste management 30 years ago. Obviously, these applications didn't exist 30 years ago. So we need our systems to be updatable. We need to introduce a modular system, for example, so that we can update these systems at all times. So they need to be updatable and they need to constantly evolve. And finally, we need uh, technical assistance, our own proprietary technical assistance because these vehicles go out every day and they collect waste. This is an extremely important past, a task. Obviously, there might be incidents. So we need our own proprietary technical assistance so that we can deal with any problems. So these are the most significant areas. I'd like to leave you with a very famous phrase from Henry Ford. True progress is that which makes technology available to all. So technology is very important, but it's very important that we make this technology available so that we can advance even further. So thank you very much.